Tony, you've got such a productive career. You've been so mm. prolific at Croissant. So it's, it's difficult mm. for me to sort of draw out uh, particular things that, that are important. Um, I wonder which things you think are, the, are, are your greatest achievements as a writer, especially for television. Working backwards, um, a recent miniseries I co-wrote with Jimmy Thompson, Rain Shadow, uh, I think was a very fine piece of work, I, I have to say. I, I, um, we had a terrific producer in Gus Howard, we had great directors, um, and a, a very fine cast, and I think it, it came out beautifully. And ABC are rerunning it at the moment on Saturday nights. Um, but so working backwards, Blue Heel is finished. Did about ten years, you know. Was, did a very long run. Uh, and again, I was. It was sort of the small country town was part of a salute to the Australian small country town. Um, I recently looked back at the first pitch document for Blue Heelers, done in 1993. It was different in some ways, um, but Tom Croydon was still it was there. Um, I'd originally called uh, Maggie Doyle Molly Doyle, but I was told I couldn't call her Molly because Molly in, certain, in uh, country practice had been a much loved character who died of cancer and got the ratings and uh, and Tenny played her and uh, I couldn't call her couldn't call the character Molly so she became Maggie. Again we were blessed with a very good crew, a very good producer. Um, it, I co-created it with Hal McElroy who uh, takes us back to Last Wave because the McElroy brothers were the producers of The Last Wave. Um, and that was where I first got to know them. Um, the origins of Blue Heelers were odd. Jim McElroy, but both the McElroys had gone to Southern Star. Jim to do features and Hal to do television. Um, Hal, had, Hal did some wonderful television miniseries with Michael Lawrence, um, Return to Eden and The Last Frontier. And Michael is an extraordinary writer with a feel for the audience pulse. Um, Robert Bruning, who died only last year, uh, was a long-time friend of Michael's. He was. He Michael gave him the last the um, Return to Eden to read, and Robert came back and he said, Michael. I can accept the woman being thrown to the crocodile. Uh, and I can accept the, the old prospect of giving her the money. And I can even accept the, the brilliant plastic surgeon who restores her to beauty. But I can't accept the fact that she then becomes an international catwalk model. Couldn't she say, run a modelling agency? And Michael looked at him very sadly and said, you never did like Joan Crawford films, did you, Robert? <laughs> <laughs> and Michael, Michael has, has that sort of sensibility. I mean, it, it, it's the big story, the big, huge story. Anyway, I was um, uh, working with Jim McElroy on a, an Italian co-production, a feature which never got made, um, and how... Hal called me into his office one day because my, he'd been working with Michael on what was basically a good idea. It was Hamlet and the Outback. It was, it was sort of a, a station called Elsinore, you know. Um, and he, they were working with a guy from the BBC who wasn't from BBC Drama, he was from BBC Acquisitions. And he kept on changing each draft that came in he would want something different. Now, that can happen on any show, and it's not necessarily a sign of anything, except that you deliver the draft and they say, yes, but I'd like something different. They don't know what they want until they see it. And Michael had hit the wall. 
Uh, he'd done a number of drafts and, you know, this was happening. And so he walked. Hal said, you know, would you, would you come aboard and try and save the ship? I said, first of all, I'll have to talk to Michael. So I talked to Michael and I said, Hal's asked me to do this. How do you feel about that? And Michael just threw his hands in the air and said, I've had it. Do it. Do it. So I went aboard and I did some drafts and every time I did a draft they wanted something, the BBC guy wanted something different. And um, after that, Hal had been, he'd had a, some writers together in a room uh, trying to develop a show about young cops in the city. He'd been written to by a former policeman, Michael Winters. Michael at the time was working as a security guard at Taronga Park Zoo, but that doesn't really, <laughs> that's, that's, got nothing, that's got nothing to do with it. It's just interesting. Michael had had a good career with the police. Um, he, he was the first, six weeks out of academy, he was the first car to the Milpera massacre when there was people wandering around with shotguns and people dead on them in the car park. He'd later gone on to work in uniform and plain clothes in the country and he'd also worked on um, special branch uh, when there was one, um, uh, close protection for well, Bob Hawke, and including people in uh, VIPs, including Bob Hawke. Uh, and uh, so he'd had a very wide-ranging police career. He was, he'd written to Hal and said he wanted to be a writer. So when Hal was developing the Young Cops in the City concept, um, he invited Michael in and paid him the per diem to turn up to the meetings. In meetings, as you know, at 3 p.m. on the dot, everyone goes silly, and um, people start telling anecdotes and da 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 da. All of the anecdotes Michael told during silly time were about his time in, I think, Juneau or somewhere like that, a country town, and um, he'd, where he'd been both a detective and a, and a uniformed copper. And how? said to Michael, put down some anecdotes about your time in a country town uh, and Michael produced about a 10 page document including the fact that in this particular country town the highway patrol were called either blue healers or tire biters and everybody who saw it, uh, Hal, Hal thinks he saw it and said that's the title and I think I saw it and I said that's the title. I don't care who saw it. Uh, it could have been Hal, could have been, I don't know. Uh, but that was the title. It, it, how could you resist? Uh, and Hal threw me these ten pages and said do me a concept on uh, young city cops going to a country town and meeting the dinosaurs. And so I wrote a um, probably 10, 15 page concept uh, and created Tom Croydon and Maggie Doyle and uh, there was some confusion at one stage because I had a, a highway patrolman called Hashem who was Lebanese and I had a detective called Schultz, uh, who was obviously of German extraction. And when they cast Bill McGuinness and, and uh, Martin Sachs, who's Jewish, they cast Martin as the German and Bill McGuinness as the Lebanese. And it didn't, <laughs> it didn't work. So, so the detective became PJ Hashem. Uh, and uh, the, um, uh, the uniform guy, the big uniform guy became, played by Bill McGuinness, became uh, Nick Schultz. Uh, and uh, Bob Bruning was our first line producer, John Hugginson was our first story producer, he came to us from home and away. Um, 
I'd originally set it in the Dorigo. Um, then Hull wanted it in Western New South Wales. Then Channel 7 wanted to shoot it in Victoria. So Hull drove around Victoria till he found Castlemaine and said, this is, these are, we, we, we very rarely went to Castlemaine, but the opening exteriors and things like that were in Castlemaine. Someone came up to me at a party once and said, I was, I was born in Mount Thomas. And of course, he was a Castlemaine boy. Um, <coughs> and so we started and just kept going. In the first year, we didn't rate terribly well. We were at 7.30. Um, and then they switched us to 8.30 in the second year. And it went gangbusters. Oh, it started, we're still doing the same scripts from the, the same team. Um, then uh, Nick Pelizzeri and Caro Stanton came on as producer and story producer. And the show just took off from there. John Hugginson, meanwhile, had, had in his bottom drawer a show, a, a telemovie about the Brisbane Water Police. Years before, when I was still partners with Glenn Davies before he died, I developed a, a Sydney Water Police series, as had everybody else. I mean, it, it's so obvious. Heaven's sake, you know. Launches on Sydney Harbour, explosions, bang bangs, you know. <laughs> how, how could you fail? Well, people failed. Um, and mine, Glenn's and mine never got made. Anyway, so, so Hal was aware of John's telly movie and put us together. And John's telly movie was called Water Rats because of river rats and so on and so on. Kerry Packer hated the title. John, John stood out for it. I would have given in. I'd, I'd worked for the Packers. I, 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 know, when to, I know when to cop a hiding. Um, but we ended up being called Water Rats. Uh, that ran for four years and about 180 episodes. It finished because we, we'd had a sale to Germany and the Germans added up and they found they had seven police series running, including Inspector Rex, and decided that they could lose one. <coughs> and ours was the one they lost. At which point, because it was an expensive show, I mean, location, water, um, you know, exploding boats, uh, you know, uh, it just became uneconomic. It was a close run thing. We were within about 25,000 an episode. But um, it couldn't last because it, you know. Uh, our last story producer on that was Joe Horsborough, who then went on to Channel 9 with Posey and is now head of TV drama at 9. So, you know, again, things happen.